Welcome back to the channel. You're going to get shirtless dire for a little bit. <laughs> Watch me get blocked for that. <laughs> I'd be honored. <laughs> That'd be such an honor. <laughs> Due to the fact that you have enough viewers, we're going to block you now for your sexual nudity. And then I'd be like, damn, about time. <laughs> as long as somebody's watching, fuck. <laughs> Even if it's the goddamn dark forces. <laughs> Woo! Fuck. Hang on. Ooh, that was disgusting. I think I hit my car door. Nope, I dodged it. Ooh, good shot. <laughs> King of the snot rocket. Oh, I'm so happy. I'll tell you why I'm happy. I got a bag of chocolate. I got a bag of potatoes. A bag of apples. I got a bunch of canned goods and foods. Like... All right, so I basically was at a Starbucks, right? Been stranded at a Starbucks in front of it, being the shirtless homeless guy in the hot sun for two days. <laughs> you know when you get your coffee, that caramel macchiato with extra caramel sauce and strawberry glaze bullshit fucking fancy fuck cup, and you get it and you go outside and I'm just over here like, ah, I'm just, uh, oh, help me. <laughs> They're like some fucking nasty, sweaty dude with a beard outside Starbucks. How you doing, sir? <laughs> doing pretty good today, I see. <laughs> They're walking out like, eh. <laughs> get away. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, nasty guy out there. They're like, we don't talk to him. <laughs> It really blew me away that nobody came out and was like, dude, you gotta leave. My car was dead, but it really blew me away. Nobody, I think I was just too many levels of homeless guy in a car to fuck with. <laughs> so many levels up. I was like level 100. <laughs> it's your max level. <laughs> Superpower gain, no fuck ability. <laughs> People walk up, they're like, I just can't. <laughs> So anyway, I woke up. Well, last night, last night I walk. Spirit led me to a bag of chocolate. Got Kit Kats and Reese's. I'm gonna enjoy myself. What a New York peppermint patties. Don't ask where I found it. <laughs> they're in wrappers or they're clean. Don't ask where I found it. There's a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? When I go feed other countries, people in other countries, I'm going to actually have firsthand experience on something. On something. Not anything like they're going through, which is some, you know, strangle a chicken, find a rat to eat bullshit. I'm over here getting pre wrapped food that's sitting in a trash can, but wrapped. Unlike over there, where if your choices aren't rotten, just get it yourself. <laughs> Ain't no wrap Kit Kat bars and trash cans over there. <laughs> if they even have trash cans. So anyway, I'm very happy about that. I found this. I walked by this morning, and there was a fucking, there's a line of cars around a church-like building, and I'm like, this is a food place. <laughs> Use my power, my Sherlock powers. I was like, wait a minute. And you know, I was like, hello, sir. Is this a food drive thing? And they're like, yeah. And then some lady heard me and was like, are you here for it? And I was like, fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> I was not really planning on it, but fuck yeah, I am. So that was awesome. I actually woke up from a really cool dream. I don't know if I'm going to post it. I made a video about it earlier, but it was a really cool fucking dream. And I, I've had a lot of forces try to attack me in my sleep. So spirit has been kind enough to make sure I don't remember any of that shit. Because, yeah, I get, a lot, I get attacked in my sleep a lot or I'm fighting battles in my fucking sleep a lot. And the only time they think they can try to get me. <laughs> in reality, I rule Earthside. I just walk up with a gun. They're like, get on the ground, bitch. I'm like, suck my dick. <laughs> like, what? I say, get on the ground. <laughs> you get on your knees. But I got a gun. I know. Get on your knees. <laughs> we'll put that in your mouth afterwards. <laughs> No, but anyway, so I had a beautiful dream, and I woke up, and I took a walk. You know, this is after last night of finding this, and I got pizza last night. Little Caesars. I don't know if you can feel that. Can you hear that? 
Dead. Dude, it right in your own mind said beast three times. I just walked into Walmart. I explained it a second. And I something told me to go to the crossword puzzle uh, book. So I open it up to page 66, which is 66 six on this page, 67 on this page. So 666. Six, six. That's funny. Beast, 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 beast. <laughs> anyway, so I opened the top and the first word on the page is Nicholas. <laughs> it's a Nicholson, but I read Nicholas. And it was about Michael Keaton and Batman. And it was all the words, crosswords for Batman. And Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice. <laughs> hey, you been to Saturn? I've been to Saturn. <laughs> I, love, I love Michael Keaton. I love Beetle. There's a scene when I watched that movie, Batman. I remember. I, I, did, I was like, why does Batman look so familiar? There's a scene in that movie where he's near a fireplace. He's near a fireplace, and uh, like somebody's challenging him, and he's not in a Batman suit. He's just in his like you know um, whoever the fuck Batman is when he's not Batman, the rich guy. Anyway, he's wearing his tuxedo, and he go, he grabs a fucking like um, poker for the fireplace. He goes, "I'm gonna fuck you up real good." Or some shit. <laughs> he's like said some shit. He uses the Beetlejuice face, and then the guy, I'm like, "Whoa, it's Beetlejuice!" Anyway, I love that. <laughs> That's totally my character. That really is. Like when I'm on my darkest fucking side, I'm Beetlejuice. You better set her, you better set her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I took a walk. You found the food, as I said. And I'm out front of Starbucks. And I asked a couple people for jumper cables. And this one guy actually cares to listen to me. And he came out of a Jeep truck, a Juck, whatever the fuck. <laughs> and he actually listened. His name was Ricky. And shout out to Ricky. He actually fucking listened to what I had to say. Like, I could tell. I said, man, I could tell you care. He goes, yeah, I know I care. And he gave me 20 bucks. So I bought a big bag of dog food because I was running low on dog food. I had food for me, but not for my dog. I was getting close. I was getting scary. A lot of people, like I said, when they have kids or animals, they don't they don't have this faith level. They, ne- they didn't develop a good faith level. It's really a problem with society is you guys didn't develop. And that's why I don't have a problem with parents kids because that shit's scary hard. Because I got a dog, and I'm over here, like, low on dog food, but I'm quite aware from the fucked up situations I've been in life that my dog ain't going to starve to death. What are you talking about? And so, like, here I am the next day, and before it even gets too low, boom, big old fat bag of dog food for $15. Because I had, you know, it's the best I could get. But anyway, yeah. So, fucking walking. The guy gives me 20 bucks, told him how, I told him a little bit of my story and shit, and you know, got a bunch of job interviews and shit. Not all of them working as great as I wish they did. But anyway, got that. Then immediately I go over to the gas station. There's this old black man with a fucking cane and a 22 pistol on his waist. And then he crippled old black man. And I feel real bad asking him, but I saw he had jumper cables in his minivan because it was open. And he had a trailer. So I asked an old black man with a cane and a minivan and a trailer if he could pull up to Starbucks. He dumped my car and he did. And he said before he left, he looked me in the eyes and I ain't racist. When somebody needs help, I help him. And I'm like, well, you fucking help me today, sir. I fuck appreciate you so much. And then when I pulled out, some lady waved. And I was like, fuck yeah, because I don't know. Maybe she's seen the whole situation and was like, that old man. I yelled, told her, that old man helped me jump my car. I said, that sweet old man helped me jump my car. And she goes, oh, you have a good day. And I was all like, ooh. And I pull up to Wally World. I walk in, and it's just beautiful energy. Everybody's happy. Dude, I'm so happy to have these vampires out of my life. Now I can create magic. If you listen to this song, do it. Do it. I fucking challenge you. Do it. Type in wizard. Black Sabbath. If you listen to the lyrics, it talks about a man who walks down the street, spreading his magic, keeps on walking, never talking, spreading his magic. Demons worry when the wizard is near. Dun, 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 dun. Never talking, dun, 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 dun. just keeps walking, dun, 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 dun. spreading his magic. That's what we do. That's real. Black Sabbath knows. That's why he made the song. I don't know that if this cuts out at any time, I'm still posting it. Do you? Still battling the fucking yeah. I made it six days, made it four four days, four or five days, maybe six. 
Oh, 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 fuck. <laughs> I like how that, that fucking car went by and was playing Beast. It played Beast here in front of me, here in front of me, and here. So when it really passed by in front of my vehicle, they said Beast three times. That was so cool. I know I'm a Beast. I know I'm Satan incarnate. I love it. <laughs> Spread my magic. <laughs> You live in a backwards world. You go to churches, you celebrate actual Satan. <laughs> Give all my power to things outside of myself. Isn't that interesting? Now, I'm not saying that that's always true, because some of those churches actually do support a very powerful being that's good. But don't forget, you're right fucking there. Anything else I want to say? Fuck. I'm just so happy because it's like, dude, when you get cool people that give a shit, nothing makes your day more. Like, dude, it's it's almost like being the homeless guy waving the sign allows me. I haven't done that in like weeks but or a week or more. But the fact that I did it, it still was great because there's moments where you get to see the people that give a shit. And it, really, I'm the guy that's supposed to encourage that. Other homeless people be like, I <laughs> <laughs> just sit there and get your money, and they're like, <laughs> you're like, God damn, asshole, I just gave you $20. I could have bought something cool. <laughs> I worked for it. You don't even give a shit to appreciate me. I'm never going to do that again. Well, not all of us are like that. And that's why I'm blown away. That guy gave me 20 bucks and I didn't ask. And he even said, you didn't ask. That's why I gave it to you. And I was like, oh, fuck. Dude, I was sitting right here at the same spot I am now again. Like four days ago. And I was sitting here and a guy walks up and gives me a fucking Laura bar. Then he hands me a bag of jerky again later with another Laura bar. And he bought me a bag of apples. He bought me a peanut butter and jelly and bread just sitting here in my car 12 21 when i looked at the phone magic is fucking real like i said a lot of you people with kids and parent be parents you worry because you think i can't do that or i can't quit my job what will happen to me and my kids knowing that you do have empathy for your kids good points But you're thinking about what you don't want to happen. That's the problem. Man, I wish I hit another hit that again. <laughs> Fucking addiction. That's the problem. You're thinking about what you don't want to happen. So you got this kid, right? Let's, because I got a dog, and it, you might think that's not the same, and it ain't, because uh, I still have to risk. You know, my car was dead. There was times I had to go walk into job sites, and even if I get a job, I have to leave my dog in the car with the windows down under shade. If I didn't have this car, I wouldn't even get a job. If Because I'm not going to go tie my dog up anywhere or anything. That's just too far. So having the car allows me to at least try. Now, a lot of parents wouldn't even try going so far as being where I'm at right now. You would stay in a situation where your family's nearby throwing bad detriment on you. Not realizing that when you get in that car wreck and your kid loses an arm... Is because you're supposed to leave or you didn't listen to the signs. Now, will that happen? Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. Chill out. <laughs> that kid creates his own reality too. Problem is, kids aren't as... Kids are more free. They're very powerful, but they get controlled by you. Which really lowers their energy. It's really unfortunate. Because <sighs> kids are very powerful. But a lot of parents are weaker than their kids. Yeah, I got a little honk over there for confirmation. Depends on the kid, the age, where we, who we're talking about specifically. It really just depends on the specifics. But a lot of you parents won't go through spiritual transformations because that path that you must walk on faith kind of makes it seem dangerous and scary and unsecure. Like you're not going to have what you need. Not realizing that you will have what you need and that it's all going to work out anyway. And no matter how much you think you made a mistake earlier upon earlier upon earlier, you're actually where you're meant to be. The universe is so magical that a lot of the magic doesn't seem to be there because it's calculating and rerouting and everything's in play so perfectly that it just it really goes over your head. It's just the truth. It goes right over your head and you're very much unaware of how magical 
life is. If you look around you right now at everything you know, well, I call we call this the radar screen in my training. If you look at your radar screen, that's okay, I got a job, I live here in this town. Let's say I want to get money to move, well, I can probably get money for my job, or maybe my birthday's coming up. Christmas is right after that. Uh, maybe I can ask my mom or dad. I got my friends. Let me name all the friends I know. These are all the people I've ever met. Uh, dude, out of everybody you've ever even met, there's still billions more you haven't met. And there's billions of miles of shit. You, or, well, I don't know how many miles are on the planet, but billions. I'll say billions. Fuck it. Uh, millions of miles. <laughs> I don't know if there's billions of miles. But there's so many fucking miles of stuff that you haven't seen. And all that stuff's still moving. So there's a lot of factors of how you're going to be able to make it to that new location, even though you don't have enough money. But if you look at your radar screen, you might not see a way. This is the how in my training that we were taught to not worry about. How are you going to make it to France? How are you going to make it back? You don't even have money. Don't don't need to worry. How are you going to make it there? You can't even make it there. COVID. You don't need to worry. I just, just got to get to the next step and see further. And every time I went to the next spot, the airplane leave St. Louis. I made it because it'll get there. Oh, you can't go to Amsterdam. You need to have your vaccine. And this, of course, you're going to another place. Oh, I am going to Scotland, but I'm hopping off in Amsterdam. Oh, cool. Your flight itinerary says I'm stupid and you're allowed to go. Okay, cool. <laughs> you land in Amsterdam. Oh, uh, your flight was canceled. I'm going to walk out the door. A uh, cop pulls up. Uh, what you doing? I don't know why, but I feel like I need to ask you, what are you doing here? And I'm all like, blah, 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 blah. Eat dick, 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 Spell Dickicus eat. Eat it. Eat it. Suck it. Fuck. Yes. Thank you, Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch is like, fuck, fine. Oh, and I just run <laughs> outside the fucking airport door. And I'm in Amsterdam. Where to go next? Ooh, I didn't think I was going to go to France. I was going to Scotland. And then all of a sudden I'm on the Eiffel Tower. And I'm like, this is totally worth the thousands I spent on this trip that I almost lost if I didn't take the risk. Now, I had a dog and I wanted to take the dog with me. That scared me. It scared me enough to not take him with me. It scared me enough due to the regulate. you know, your dog ain't treated like your kid uh, through an airport system, for instance. Uh, there's a good chance after what I was looking into that they would have just took my dog and took him to a, a kill shelter or some shit. It really planned out to where, like, if anything was wrong, the exact height requirements for my dog and its carrier that could fit underneath my um seat wasn't exact 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 they just oh my god it was retarded so i'd probably be fucked so i didn't i didn't take that risk and but as you can see see how that fucking and but then i wouldn't have hopped over the airport fence probably with my dog either and i needed to do that so i didn't bring them so as you can see, having a dogs or kids, having responsibilities, or when you yourself haven't fucking mastered yourself enough to even have those responsibilities, now you never get there. So you, you, you have a kid for a reason, you're fine. I have a dog for a reason, I'm fine. Mm. And uh, if anything, my dog keeps me protected in my car and I'm sleeping at night and shit. You know, wakes me up when somebody's coming by. It's really cool. I really appreciate my dog. My dog's fucking awesome. I'm very happy that somebody gave me uh, 20 bucks to get him dog food because uh, I actually am trying to be a good, loving person and supportive parent, I guess you would call. So that's kind of, this dog's kind of my baby. He's finally stopped giving me the evil eye. He, he was always, my dog's smart. He's like, you could abandon me. You don't fucking hurt me. And I haven't done anything like that. And now we're at a point in our relationship where, I mean, I can grab his paws, his legs. He's a little chihuahua-sized dog. Totally trust me to fuck with them in all kinds of fucking ways. It's so cute. Dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> you over here sweating your ass off? Yeah, my next fucking great uh, thing I want to buy is a fucking vacuum. I never thought I would want a vacuum. I want my own handheld vacuum to clean the fucking dog fur. <laughs> I'm sitting here with a fucking hair roller. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what else? Oh. Well, some tips for you if you're a parent is um, there is things you can do at your current belief level. You need to know what you want. It's a really big thing. Like, for instance, go to a store 
and focus on something you want. Now, the problem is you have to actually want it. A lot of people hear me say you can have beer, do whatever you want. But a lot of you don't realize that everything on the list of infinite things you could want, a billion dollars, a Hummer, your own fucking private jet, you might not actually be thinking about that private jet that much. And it's whatever you think about most of the time. Most of the time. Like, I'm over here with dog fur, right? So I think about vacuums a lot like lately. And because of that, walking through the Walmart parking lot, I've seen a trash a box that held a vacuum you know your manifestations are indicators of what you're vibrating therefore when i walk through the walmart parking lot of course there would be the only thing of trash a big box that held a shop vac and then when i was walking down the street earlier yesterday uh, before i got the candy there was a vacuum cleaner next to the garbage cans interesting so i literally got the, the vacuum cleaner and the box it goes in it was a different vacuum cleaner but you get what i'm saying that's because I've actually thought about it enough due to the fact that I'm looking at what I don't want enough, but I'm still focusing on what I do want. I'm looking at the dog fur in my car and I'm thinking about getting that vacuum cleaner. Now, somebody else might look at that and be just thinking about the dog fur, which is causing more things they don't want in their life, which is experiences, situations, fucking kid shits the diaper when you're at the gas station now because you're thinking about you know kind of like attracts like the excess that comes off animals or the waste byproduct that comes off of the responsibilities that you have to keep and now you're seeing more of that you see how that's kind of tuned into that frequency i'm looking at specific vacuum cleaners but i'm seeing not the ones i was looking at vacuum trash and vacuums there's still vacuums <laughs> well, that's a cardboard box. There's a picture of a vacuum on it. But that's a cardboard box. That's not a vacuum cleaner. There was a vacuum in it once. Therefore, an object vibrating that is a vacuum made out of atoms, everything's made out of atoms, but the energy frequency is a vacuum cleaner, was vibrating in that box. People that look at the box are quite aware they're not looking at a blank thing of cardboard. They're thinking about the vacuum that's in the box. That's why when I open up a book, I open it up right to page 66, and it has my name on it and a fun movie quote. And then when I read it, the, the next Sudoku book that I pulled from fell like a joke, like, like next, <laughs> like buy this one. I might go in there and buy it. I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, because like attracts like. You don't really get what that fully means because you're not as open-minded. That's why when I talk about getting a goal, if you focus on one thing, fucking thing all day you're gonna see it in your ethers because one there's a lot more magnetic pull towards what you're thinking about you want to i know it sounds so stupid but a vacuum cleaner you're thinking about it you're thinking about it i'm gonna clean up the hair i can't wait it's gonna be portable i'm gonna keep it in my car i'm gonna put it underneath my fucking seat every day i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna be able to charge it i'm gonna charge it outside somewhere plug it into a building i don't give a fuck wake up i'm gonna be able to do the vacuum and then what do i do well there's a little thing in there that's a filter that you need to clean with water so i guess i'll probably go to the side of this dollar tree they have a fucking uh, faucet a hose on the outside of the building i could probably go over there when i'm done and clean off the filter because i'm in a car so i don't have a kitchen sink to clean it in so then i could go put it back into the thing and shove it right back into the car spot i have a little spot for it a little spot for it kind of like a katana in a fucking sheet right there next to your fucking body right a little spot for it perfect that's how you gotta think to get what you want and you think about it you think about it think about it i keep going to the walmart I keep looking at that vacuum cleaner i want that shark vacuum cleaner for 80 dollars 80 dollars i need 80 dollars fuck i need a tire that's 80 bucks fuck i'll get a tire another tire this one this is what i want <laughs> how much is that i write it down well, vacuum 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 and then i i've already had the opportunity that, you know for all i know that vacuum that's on the ground probably worked and i could use it and that's the interesting thing when you want something don't settle for less because the universe will pop up, man, if you want a boyfriend or a girlfriend. They'll start coming in. Those are people. But that might not be the right person for you. But they are coming in. The vacuum cleaner came in already. It was in the trash section. They dig through the trash. Interesting. To get food. So that makes sense why it would manifest there. See what I'm saying? Because I was thinking about getting food out of trash cans. Now here's this fucking... Yeah. You know, I got a buddy uh, who I'm not talking to right now because he's a little possessed, but he drives dump truck. And um, 
you know, I guarantee you if you were a dump truck driver like him, people would start buying interesting products and throwing them in their trash because you're going to see it. That This is why it's so crazy of a world you live in because everything's at play for everybody. It's that magical. When you think a thought, other people pick up on it. It's truth. So that's why when you think about what you want most of the time, you're focusing on one thing. That way, when you're focused on it, I be- you want a water bottle. All of a sudden, there's a water bottle out there in the world. Hello? <laughs> you're like, I want a water bottle. I don't see it yet. This is miles away. I want a water bottle. But I don't. I can't afford it. Oh, let me do it this way. <laughs> but I know I'm gonna get it. Oh, I'm walking through the desert. I want that water so bad. Oh, I'm never gonna get it. Oh, but you start getting close to death, and you know you don't give a shit. You don't care no more. And boom, it comes in. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. It's that moment where you have no more doubt that it. Oh, hello. Because what you want wants you. You know, you're picturing in your head water bottles. There's a bunch of water bottles that are going to be popping up, floating around your fucking ether. <laughs> uh, some are going to have what you want and not want. You ask for a water bottle. Don't have no water in it, but it is a water bottle. Oh, shit. Well, how, what feeling did you have when you got thought about water bottles? Did you believe you were going to get it? Did you feel you can't wait? Because if you got this, you would probably feel, oh, fuck. So if you were wanting that fucking thing and you were thinking uh, and feeling uh, the whole time when it comes in, oh. shit, came in, no oh, great. That's the problem with people that want more and they're billionaires too. They want more and more and more and more and they get it, but it, it, it don't, they don't ah, come in like that. You know, life's more magical about the experience of how it comes in. Don't worry about the how. That's why it's so cool. Because when it does come in, there's, there is a how. There's a story. You wanted that car, and the guy happened to have it, and you went to the gas station, and he was choking on a fucking drumstick, and you saved his life. And all of a sudden, he's so happy you saved his life. And did you know he has that 66 Impala that you want? Or some bullshit. <laughs> sitting out at his house and months ago when you started thinking about it was when his brother sold it to him. Months ago when you thought started thinking about it, his brother sold it to him. Collective consciousness. Now if you would have gave that up, somebody else was thinking about a nice car and that's why they weren't so particular on what they wanted and they would have got it. But if you focus on one fucking thing and you never give up and you know you're going to get it and no matter how many not even the fact that you want it and that evidence comes in that, you know, doesn't say anything about it. It's the fact that when evidence comes in that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt, you won't get it. You don't have a ride to trucking school. You're homeless. You're sleeping in a tent behind a JC Penny with another homeless guy. You're just tra- in the winter. You have no money. You're broke. No help. Trucking school starts soon. But you go to the library and you study up. You study up, you study up, you study up. Then you go on the side of the road and you wave a sign. And you get just enough money for the permit, nothing else. Enough money so when you get there, you'll be able to pay for the permit, nothing else. You don't have any food. Trucking school is three weeks or more, maybe even a month. You don't even have food or a ride. Doesn't matter. I know I'm going to be a truck driver. Then all of a sudden you start walking and blah, blah, blah. You meet your friend on the side interstate who sees you in the middle of the morning across the fucking interstate in his window. He stood up on top of a fucking speaker, looked over the interstate, which by the way, you still can't see me. So the story makes no sense anyway, but that's how it happened. And he was the last person in all the miles I walked. I walked from fucking uh, Washington to Union to St. Clair with a big ass heavy backpack and I had to make it there in trucking school and I had 24 hours or less to make it there and it was a three, two, three hour drive. No way of making it there, but I left anyway. I didn't care. I had the fact that everybody decided not to help me with the ride and the people that agreed to help me get me there didn't was the evidence I needed to validate that I'm getting there. Just look at it. Think about how trippy it is when evidence comes up. It's on the same topic. 
Like just the fact that I had a ride and now I don't, there's no way I can get to trucking school. Isn't it interesting though, how many people shut that down like last second? Like, oh yeah, you're good. Oh, I can't help you out. Sorry, work, busy. It's so weird. I'm on vacation. I just really can't. I'm not there for you. It's everybody. It was almost like designly planned to where I couldn't get help from any of these people. Because when I got to my friend's house and he saw me and then his mom chased me with a machete, seriously, uh, I got chased out the door with a machete while he was chasing the other kid who was drunk. So I drove him and I can't, and I went in the opposite direction and now I was all the way out in fucking warrants and miles away. I was even further away from trucking school. But then I said hi to my mom again who still had my car because she wouldn't stop thinking about me, which means I had to consent to the manifestation and officially cut it off. And that was the one time I came back after I said goodbye forever. And I threw all my stuff away in a trash can when I said goodbye forever at a truck stop in St. Clair before I ever thought of becoming a trucker. And now I have to say hi to my mom again. And I go back over there. My car's there. And there's a check. If my, this cuts out, I apologize. But there's a check waiting for me for my taxes. My car won't start. But there's about a hundred and something dollar check. So I, I, I go, it must be the battery. My mom's like, it can't be the battery. There could be too many factors of what could be wrong with your car. It goes, that can't be true because I know I'm making it to trucking school. And this, the fact that my car won't start and I have a check is a prerequisite for the fact that this money is the exact amount of money that I need to get there. And so I bought a new battery. Had to buy new cable things or whatever. It was the exact amount. It was enough for that and the gas. It was enough. And I made it all the way to trucking school with a headlight out. I had no food and I got there and I met friends and they fed me every day. And they had a breakfast, which I didn't know about, that was free at the hotel I would be staying at for three weeks. I went from being homeless at a JCPenney with nothing to stay in three weeks at a nice hotel with badass people, getting a free meal in the morning, and they bought me meals that we had Thanksgiving at Cracker Barrel because we started in the dead of winter. This is the worst time to start trucking school. It's the dead of winter. Do you see how my story's going? I know it's 32 minutes in. That's three, two, one, four. That's one, two, three, four. <laughs> my point is you can do all this shit too whether you have a kid or not. You get there, you see further. You need to want something though. I wanted to make money out of my home. And the path that was revealed to me while really wanting it was trucking, which is ironic because I, well, the truth was I bought a phone and talked to a girl and then I got a fucking voicemail of an opportunity to make money out of my home. And then I needed about $9,000, but I was homeless behind a JCPenney. There's no way I could make $9,000. But the path led me to trucking school, which then I became a truck driver. Which then I saved up all my money. Besides the junk food I got to buy, I saved up my entire trucking career. People were like, why'd you quit? I didn't go to be a truck driver. I wanted to make money out of my home, and I took that $9,000, and I invested it in an online business. And when I invested it, I went to a bank with that same friend who saw me across the interstate. And when we went to the bank, we had a good old gay time laughing and singing and having a dancing, joyous moment as everyone said, you're fucked, you're fucked. We can't agree to send this money. It's an offshore account. It's a blah, 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 a.k.a. we're saying words telling you that this looks shady as fuck and the money's going into a black hole. And I'm like, no, it ain't. And then I made $10,000 in the stock market. And then my family robbed me, which is a prerequisite that I'm going to get it all anyway. There's a lot more, too, I could add to it to spice that up to really prove that. But the proof will come in soon. Always does. Don't worry about the timing. Love it. So it's all going to work out. You need to know what you want. If you want to know what it is you want, get a pen and paper. Take a blue pen. And you open up a fucking notebook. See the notebook? I got hundreds of these. This is a small... I bought this just because I needed something to write in. If you write down things you want, they come in. When you type on a computer, you're using about eight fingers. Or ten. Let's say ten. So you're only using ten neurological pathways in your brain. Whatever you think about, you get. So you're only using ten things up here. I'm going to get a new car. There was an experiment done where 100 secretaries, 50, were told to write down everything the guy said. The other 50 was told to type everything the guy said. 
Within a certain 30 minutes in, they had a five-minute smoke break or 10-minute smoke break, and they came back in. And then the guy asked, now I want you to tell me what it is you typed, and I want you, the other 50, tell me what it is you wrote. The people that wrote it down remembered the random shit they were told to write. The people that typed it couldn't remember nothing. It actually blew them away on how much they can't remember anything about what the fuck they just typed. That's why in schools, they got these new computers because they're treating our kids so right. No, they ain't. You're making your kids stupid. <laughs> Don't type. When you type 10, when you text 2, when you write 10,000. When you write over 10,000 neurological pathways are being activated in your brain. So when you write, I want a car with your cursive, your spell casting. Your influenza hand is moving. Think about your fucking earth hand. Like, see this cup? It's a cup. It sits there, holds stuff, doesn't do shit. Look at your hand. These are powerful. That's why when I move my hand, shit happens. That's happening for you too. You just don't have the belief level yet to see it in your radar screen. Because when you're moving around going, I don't know, I think I want to go to a concert. That boyfriend or girlfriend you're hoping to meet decided to buy the ticket too. And when you go, ding dong, I'm going to write the fucking receipt and whatever the fuck you're doing. Your hands especially. So get a notebook, write down everything I could have, beer, do, or want. Write down, like, write down what if I can have, beer, do, anything I want, money's not an object. Write down whatever. Fill the whole page. Uh, get a new laundry mat. Uh, get a new house, new car. Quit my job, get a better job. Break up with my girlfriend, get a better girlfriend. Donate money to a foreign country. Oh, I didn't think about others besides myself. Yeah, I could send care packages to other countries. Well, if I could have beer do anything, I'd fucking get a fleet of yachts. And we'd do cruises and sail. And then I would, at the end, try to get the people that came to invest money into little fucking care packages for other countries. We'd go to poor countries. We'd have a nice cruise, but then we'd go to a poor country and they'd all see outside the fucking thing. Oh, my God, they're getting bombed over there. Yeah, you hear the planes? <laughs> yeah, see the fucking sulfur? Yeah, you should donate a little bit. Now, we're going to go out and have a vacation here. You're going to enjoy yourself. But, you know, that's – see, think about how creative that is. Right. Write shit down. I don't care what I get cut off. Write shit down, but write things down that actually come to your brain. The things that come to you will be very interesting. When you first start this out, you won't do well. You're not gonna. You're gonna sit there looking stupid. A little kid could do better than you at this. Oh, I'll go pickle monster, we Oreo wheel truck. They can see that little kid can actually because they don't care about the judgment. No one's gonna see it. You don't have to show nobody. But if you don't fucking write it down. You're it, you're missing out because ninety percent of the things I've wrote down in dream books, I'm gonna say fifty. But if you knew how awesome that is, like, dude, if you could write that, if only if only one percent, but dude, it's higher than that. Like everything you write down will eventually come to pass in a way or better. So write it down. You know. Think about how you've probably been on this planet for 20, 30, 40 years and you never wrote down on a piece of paper, I want a million dollars. Ain't that interesting? Ain't that trippy? You might have been on this planet for I don't know how long, but you never decided to write that down. What's the harm in it? Now, your belief level might not be there and the million dollars is getting further away. If you think about it too much and you're stressed out, you're having anxiety attacks, you'll never get it. But planting a seed... It'll start to grow, especially when you go down the path. Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> You're going to get some that grow. Eventually, that one will grow too. Might take a while. Might take years. Who gives a fuck? Because when the things start coming in, every it's like every day if you planted a bottle of fucking wine in a cellar. 80 years from now, every day, you'll have an 80-year-old bottle of wine. Every day. You'll have an 80-year-old bottle of wine. Think about that. Oh, this is like, oh, legit. oh my God, fancy man. He's pouring us in. Oh, yes. Tomorrow, oh, another one. Oh, my God. Another one. <laughs> it works like that. You don't have to wait 80 years. This shit works quicker than that. Um, I'm probably going to get cut off, so I should probably end this. Last things, I guess I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, get a pen, blue ink. Write things down, what you want. When you write things down at the end, let's say you write 10 things down. Right next to it, 
on a belief level that you can achieve this in the next six months, one through 10. Afterwards, look at it all. Okay, jet, one. One out of 10, I don't believe that. Uh, get a better job. Oh yeah, like a nine. Um, get a better, uh, break up with my girlfriend. What, in six months? Um, yeah, I can do that as a 10. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. Uh, <laughs> you know, one million dollars? Ooh, that's a one again. One or two. Maybe even a zero, but don't put zero because there's always a little belief. If it's so out there, it's zero. Why the fuck you write it out? You know? <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> it's zero. Because you're not lying to yourself. Be real. And at the end, look back on that fucking list. Look back on that fucking list. It's 40 minutes in. You know, it's funny. Nobody's probably going to listen to this, but you fucking should. Save your fucking life. Look back on that list and look through and look at the things that are nines and tens. That's true. But look for the one that you really want that you wrote down. Because, you know, you might not care about a dryer right now. But breaking up with your girlfriend, you actually do want because you're living stressed. And if you do that, break up with her, you'll get further. Maybe you ain't going to get a private jet right now because you're with the wrong person. And that person don't deserve to be in a private jet. And so if you break up with her... Later, you'll look back on that list and you'll write that as a three. And you'll say, get a new job and you'll quit your job and you'll go get a better job that pays way more. Not enough to get a private jet yet, but now that private jet became a four. Do you see what I'm saying? Go do that. That's your mission. I love you. Oh.